While this channel is primarily about astrophotography, a good chunk of us learn where things are in the night sky using visual astronomy. In this video, we will go over a great starter telescope for visual astronomy, the 8-inch Dobsonian, starting now. Hi, Dalen here. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, consider giving this one a like. Let's get going. As a beginner, it is a good idea to have a capable telescope you can use for visual astronomy. Now, this is a very good idea because if your current setup uses a star tracker without go-to capability, you know how to find things in the night sky. And let me tell you, there is something to be said about finding things for the first time without a go-to system or somebody else doing it for you. I'll never forget the first time I found the Whirlpool Galaxy. My mind was blown and it was completely impossible using the three inch reflector that I had before I bought my recommendation which is, again, the 8-inch Dobsonian. Now, the one I do use and recommend is the Zoomal Z8, but let me let you in on a little secret. They're pretty much all the same. There's only a few manufacturers worldwide, and the only difference between them is which sticker they put on the side. So in that regard, if you can't get the Zoomal Z8 where you live, or it is easier with shipping costs to get a different brand, go ahead and search for that. All right, so let's go over a few pros and features. All right, and the first one is they are cheap. Compared to other telescopes that have the same focal length, these telescopes are very cheap. At the time of recording, they average at around $450, but do keep in mind that prices do change, and because because of the pandemic, there has been a shortage of manufacturing telescopes and everything has been a little bit backed up. All right, the way Dobsonians are designed, they let in a lot of light. At 1200 millimeter focal length, this thing is a beast when it comes to collecting detail, even under light polluted skies like my backyard where cars drive by. Setup is a breeze. All you do is you put the base down and then you put the scope in the base and you're done. No need to pull or align no need to turn on any computer equipment. Now, when you do get it delivered, there may be a little bit of assembly required. Uh, most of the ones with a wood base, they do come packed up and they have some pretty good instructions on putting it together. Oh, and the other thing here is that if you have to go somewhere with the telescope, say you're going to a star party or going to do some sidewalk astronomy, just check the collimation before you get started. But other than that, setup is very easy. Base, scope, Good. Right, compared to other telescopes, caring for a Dobsonian is ridiculously easy. Uh, some of them you might have to collimate at home before doing anything, but a Dobsonian, seriously, all I do is I have it pretty much set up in the room where I store my telescopes and my camping gear, and I just have a sheet over the Dobsonian to keep dust out. That's it. Now, if you do have to do collimation or clean the mirrors, it's a little bit more in depth, but that means something went seriously wrong if you have to clean the mirrors. All right, most of them come with a wood base with an eyepiece tray. Mine ended up getting broken off. I'm not exactly sure how. Maybe on one of my camping trips I've taken it with me on. I can't tell you. Anyway, it is nice if you have it and you do plan on using it. However, I always have a table with me when I go do visual astronomy. That way I can lay my eyepieces out on the table and also have any star charts uh, or observation notes there uh, available and easy to get to. All right, so there are also some cons when it comes to these telescopes. And the first one I will recommend is that if you want to keep it cheap, do not go with go-to capability. Yes, there are go-to capable daubs out there and the price is way higher. I highly recommend just avoiding go-to altogether with a daub. That way you can just practice finding things in the night sky. All right, another big con here is that if you have to travel, it can take up a lot of room in your vehicle. Now, for me, I drive a car and the telescope goes inside the car on the back seat and the base goes in the trunk and it just fits. Uh, if my trunk was just slightly smaller, the base wouldn't fit in it. Another con here with the 8-inch Dobsonian is that if you are looking to find some really good details on the planets, and I'm talking insane details, you're not going to get that. You're going to want to go with a much, much bigger scope. But then again, we're talking budget here. This is a great starter scope, and you can make out the Cassini division in Saturn. So you'll get quite a bit of details, and the stripes on Jupiter look amazing through this telescope. Okay, and the last con here is because of how big the telescope is itself, they do take a little bit longer to acclimate to the ambient temperature outside. So my recommendation here to avoid that is get set up at least before sunset. So that way it has plenty of time to acclimate before astronomical twilight ends. All right, let's go over a few tips that you can use while using a Dobsonian telescope. And the first one is 
is if you are a beginner, the right angle finder that it comes with can be a little bit confusing to use at first if you're not used to using one. So for that, I recommend getting a Telrad and just attaching it to the side of the scope. From there, you can just get directly behind the telescope and aim from there. After you think you found your object, you can check the right angle finder because you can generally make out whatever it is you're trying to find unless it's super dim and then you check your eyepiece. And the Telrad that I recommend is linked in the description below. Another thing that can help too is that in Stellarium, there is a Telrad viewfinder to help you find things in the night sky. So using the Telrad view in Stellarium can help you learn which stars to jump between while you're out there, and then you can take the Telrad on the daub and star hop to find your object. Due to how much light the Dobsonian lets in, the moon and Jupiter are insanely bright if your eyes are fully dark adapted so i recommend using a filter you do want to protect your eyesight just a little bit and let me tell you a full moon through that without a filter yeah, your eyesight's wrecked for about a good 30 minutes. All right, and the last tip here i do have for you is if you are going somewhere that gets really dewy take some dew heaters for the eyepiece the tube itself of the daub takes a long time to get to the point where it's really really hazed over from dew however the eyepiece can do over quick so take some dew heaters with you all right so let's go over who this telescope is for and the first one is for beginner astronomers and astrophotographers who want to learn how to find things on their own in the night sky and this is also for astronomers who want a great grab and go telescope for star parties and sidewalk astronomy and sidewalk astronomy is the reason that john dobson created this telescope in the first place in the 1970s this telescope is not for astrophotographers looking to do deep sky objects. Now, you can get away with doing solar system objects with lucky imaging and some attachments like this. However, anything further out than Saturn, you're out of luck. You're better off going with a different setup. Overall, going with the Dobsonian is a great choice to start off with in your journey in astronomy and astrophotography you'll find that it is a great grab-and-go visual telescope that you will use for years to come. But I do have a question for you. Do you already have a telescope that you use primarily for visual astronomy? If so, what telescope is it? If not, what are you looking at getting? Is it the 8-inch Dobsonian or something else? Let me know down in the comments below and let's discuss it. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, subscribe, and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.